Hello everyone, welcome to the redesign of the Shinkansen space plane for Kerbal Space Program. This will be primarily done in Blender. For those of you who haven't seen this before, uh, I've used this in many videos past, but not recently. And the concept was that we would have two identical space planes like this. Uh, the Kagami doors are not currently on here. But there would be another one, they'd be attached belly to belly, and then this one is the one with crew and cargo, potentially, and then the other one would be filled with fuel and automated. And the that one would stay suborbital, this one would go to orbit, and proceed to be refueled and bring crew and cargo over to the moon. This is mainly for the moon. Uh, of course, we have smaller vehicles that are simpler to get people to low Earth orbit. Uh, the goal here is that it would use its wings to come back from the moon, by aero capturing. So uh, going from the high orbit that you go to to get to the moon, uh, bring itself back down not by using propulsive power, but by aero braking in Earth's atmosphere uh, down to a low, for low Earth orbit where it could pick up more crew and cargo. It would only actually come back down to the surface in order to get maintenance. Basically, if it absolutely needed to uh, get maintenance that couldn't get in space, then it would come back down to the surface. So it was meant to be reusable, staying in space. Uh, some other vehicle like Dragon would carry people to low Earth orbit. And so that was the goal, but there were many, many flaws. Uh, mathematically, it's very nice and all. It uses methane and oxygen, but I designed the system a little bit too tightly. It, we have this huge cargo bay. It could never use this cargo bay because it doesn't have the cargo capacity for it. Uh, basically, it, uh, its fuel is limited, and the fuel in the carrier plane plus the space plane is just about barely enough to get this into orbit with the crew without any cargo. So there's no real point to the huge cargo bay. The fuel capacity was limited by the capacity of the space launch system or Starship. So the idea was that this would be refuelable by one launch of Space Launch System or Starship. And that was a key constraint. That means that there's a limit to how big this can be. And that, that I'm straying away from. Uh, because after all, they're talking about using a depot for a Starship anyway. So we won't limit the fuel capacity in here to that. But... I'll try to make sure that that quantity, the quantity that can fit in a Starship or a Space Launch System, Block 1B uh, to low Earth orbit, not Block 1, that would be impossible, Block 1B to low Earth orbit would be sufficient for it to do the moon mission. So go to the moon, capture around the moon, and then come back. Uh, th so that's the goal, that we want it to be enough, but the redesign of this will have more fuel capacity uh, to make it easier to get into lower orbit with some spare fuel. Uh, and that would be a relief. Uh, I also decided that originally it would have gas generator engines in the back, the ED4s, and then later the ED8s. Instead of that, we're going to have stage combustion because everybody's making stage combustion methane oxygen engines anyway, namely SpaceX and ULA, well, not ULA, but Blue Origin. So we're just going to use stage combustion engines, which would be more efficient. Uh, they're lighter as well, but they're a little bit more difficult to deal with, but probably better anyway. Uh, but there are a lot of changes that need to be made. Uh, let's, let me go through all the flaws. First of all, we have RCS in the nose here, but there are RCS tanks in the nose. And they of course drain over time, but they're so far ahead of the center mass back here. Uh, and actually the center mass might be a little bit further back. Uh, it might not be represented by this part of the model because there are en we don't have the engines in the back. This is the center of mass of this portion, but there are engines in the back that would move it further back. But the point is that with the RCS tanks in front, the, they change the center of mass location too much. So instead of having the RCS tanks here, I would like to have them here. And so we'll have the RCS in the back, RCS in the front, and then the center of mass somewhere over here in the middle of the two instead of having them all the way in the front. That allows for a section here that would allow the forward portion to abort. So we'll dump the back section, and then so this section will have the fuel for the RCS, but also the fuel for the abort motors. And 
uh, a decoupler and then that part portion, the forward portion would separate off. Uh, another issue was the fact that the center of lift was too far back, generally speaking. And so the separation, separable portion of this will have canards. And so that will solve the center of lift position issue and also give control for the forward portion of this. Now, of course, since we're going to be having a break here, of course, we're going to be limiting the cargo bay. There will still be a cargo bay, but the cargo bay will not be so big. It'll be smaller and limited to wherever we have the break. And that means that the rest of this will be fuel capacity. So we'll extend the fuel capacity. Instead of just having this area be fuel capacity, we'll have it go up to here. And so that those kinds of changes. Also, when we did aero braking with this coming back from the moon, it turns out that it needed too many passes. So we're going to lengthen the wings a little bit so that it can take fewer passes and hopefully that will help us out. And of course, with the canards also, that'll add more uh, surface area that will help us slow down. Uh, then, yeah, th those are some of the things that I'm going to change, but I'll think about, also there's just the general model of it. Uh, it could look better. And so, yeah, I decided to change it and let me show you what I started to do in Blender to do this. So this is going to be a Blender process video primarily. I'm gonna start off with a cylinder. I need to reset the cursor location too. The reason why uh, the zero zero point is up here is because for the IVA, we want the cabin to be at the zero zero point. So in the configuration file, we'll move the center of mass as necessary. So we're just sort of scaling the cylinder appropriately. And then we're gonna make some chops. So tab to enter the edit mode. And then we're just gonna do some loop cuts. GG, uh, press G twice in order to shift the loops cuts. Okay, so I want proportional. Uh, so that when we scale, we can sort of scale it like this to make a smooth shape. But it depends on whether it is the smooth shape we want. Maybe I want some more cuts. We could have this smooth one, we could have inverse square, sharp, linear. Let's see what linear does for us. I think that's more of a Shinkansen-like shape. O for the proportional editing. Okay, this we're going to shade smooth and then we're going to have the auto smooth here under this menu, the object data properties. All right, let's take a look at this shape for a second, adjust the nose. I don't know, I, I feel like I want to flatten the nose a little bit more. So back to proportional editing, Z scaling. This bit here seems not smooth enough, so we'll sort of bevel that. And bevel this one too. Oh, that one's not perfectly done. Oops, not what I want. Now, trying to make the blended wing shape is was tricky to begin with, and it's still going to be tricky.
Hmm, these just look weird. I don't know. Come on. Again, G twice to slide them. We'll worry about the back end later. Now, should I make it bulkier? To get more fuel space? Probably. Hmm. Well, what happened here? You're just one, right? Okay. You're... you're not one. Okay. Alright, fix it time. We are going to merge at center, hopefully. It's probably the symmetrization and I guess one of the points was off-center. Okay, uh, please let these be at zero. Okay, so obviously we have to somehow get wings on this thing. The original looks like this. It's very rounded at the top. Getting shapes to look nice is finicky. It's smoother, but it's not perfect. Okay, wings, like I was saying. Maybe I should just do proportional again. I think I'll make the outer portion separate. The flared up portion separate, maybe? I want a more Shinkansen-ish cockpit. Uh, sort of more like the trains version. We have to keep in mind the cabin in there. Maybe in this case the body should be moved forward. We're probably gonna abandon the older body as a reference anyway. I think what I want to do is a cube that's going to have a lot of subdivision. A lot of subdivision. Anyway, I'll deal with that in a little bit long. Uh, I'll, I'll think about that. Um, what we want to do is ultimately this actually has to be a different space plane. So actually, we want this to be thinner. The wing root still needs to be thinner. Let's let's shove in a tank and see how much volume we have for that first. Nope. Maybe I can adjust the bottom mesh and pull it up and sort of create, uh, use this as a reference to create a shape, but actually get rid of it and then separate off that part. Anyway.
Oh, you still have to give it some sort of tankishness. Center tree won't work if it's not in the center. Let's just temporarily move it to the center. Okay, how much volume are you? 215 meters cubed. So, 215,000 liters. It's not, shouldn't be too bad. Now, for the carrier plane, we need another one. And this will actually have to inform us about where we where we're going to put the brake in it. Maybe it's gotta be further back than I thought it was gonna be. And how big are you? Two hundred and five. So the carrier plane can have, if we have that be the front end, basically double the capacity of the space plane. That's okay. It's not perfect. Actually, the carrier plane in the original configuration has more than double because it's also feeding into the space plane. Our wing probably needs, if this is the brake line, we will need this to be shaped a little bit differently. So this section will be the adapter section. That's the front end. It's still a bigger front end than I was wanting. Well, as long as this is shaped a little bit weirdly, maybe we should just extend it forward a bit more. As long as it doesn't poke out. By the same token. Well, let's enter. Uh, let's estimate the center of mass position. And what we're going to do is we're going to set origin, center of mass surface. So right now it's thinking that's the center of mass. Probably the center of lift is way far back, so we probably want some sort of canard here, which is fine because we probably want control if the two parts break apart. Or separate. Break apart is a bad way of saying it. So now... Well, we're not that much less wing than the original. So okay, that's not too bad. We'll end up with having more wing than the original. Okay, chop time, I think. This is risky, which is why I saved. Um, because if I try and change the shape after I chop it apart, well, that, that might not be the best thing. Okay, I declare this. The Billy the payload. I'm just gonna call it the payload. And for now, the cabin is part of the payload. Oh, we can't drag it like that. And a B is part of the payload. And certainly the docking adapter. A board section. Now, of course, the carrier plane being automated doesn't need to abort. 
So it's not a problem that has a huge tank in it. Otherwise, that would be a problem. And then finally, this is the back end. Okay, let's sort of seal each of these up individually. We need an extra bit of room here for the engines. We'll keep that in mind. First this, though. So now this abort section is what carries the forward RCS. instead of that being all the way in the nose there. Less control authority, but more balanced. Okay, um, auto-smoothing is not auto-smoothing enough right there. Why are you not so smooth? You guys should all be in the same plane. Apparently that's not the problem. Okay, we're just going to have to... Make polygons. Oh, I'll do it on this side. Still? Come on, you're composed entirely of happy polygons. <laughs> this is not right. Guess it's not a big deal, but highly irregular. Ah, this back end is too close. And we need to make an engine section. And get both of these. Okay, now in this collection, can you import that? Okay, good. Okay, um, let's just have you all have the chamber as the parent. Okay, but we don't want the full-size Rex engine, because that would be too powerful. Let's say 80%. 80% means 64% of the thrust because the thrust scales by area. But we only have room for two here. Maybe I should just extend the back out a little bit. They should be able to stick out a little bit, but... I guess maybe we'll have a body flap, actually. So in case of the body flap, we don't need to extend this part too much. Let's pull it back a bit. I want to flatten these out a little bit. Simplify the addition of the body flap. We don't want it curved like that. I think we'll need a little bit more room for plumbing. I think I need to size this a little bit less. Body flap. Uh, we gotta watch out for those. Maybe we should move those end engines up a bit.
Now there are a lot of finicky things I could do with the body flap, but I'll just make sure it's thinner at one end for now. And then why don't we have the outer control surfaces? There's no airflow going over the top of it though. Definitely need to reshape the back of the wing. We don't need the body any bigger than the tank, that's for sure. There's a troublesome spot right here. Yeah... I caused problems for myself. I'm gonna have to do something about that leading edge. Alright, let me set the back end aside for now. And let's do the adapter section. I just... I should have done this with the other bit too. Not a perfect solution, but... Okay, so we need... Thrusters, tanks, and RCS. I mean, RCS and then the board thrusters, if we were going to do that deal. Much smaller. Let's actually just have everything visible. So we got forward firing ones like that. Not ideal, but since it's not in the nose, that's how we have to do it. Don't know what the policy is for having RCS on the heat shielded side, so we're just going to avoid that. Um, but there's a limit to how much we can tilt these things here. So... Can't really have things that point down very well. So a pretty hefty amount that we have to abort with. Really, uh, I'm disturbed by how much volume we have here though. We'll put some sort of cargo bay, but still, we'll have to think about this. Uh, we probably will have some extra crew capacity so that, because they're going all, all the way out to the moon, it'll be a little bit more comfortable. But what do I do about the ones that point downward? The good thing about the shuttle is it has a sort of flat side to it. This does not. This is curved. Maybe we can have them and then have little trap doors for them? Hmm. <laughs> you know, have them at the bottom, but have a little flap, like the umbilical flaps for the shuttle, you know, where they connect to the external tank. I mean, so they've done that before. Having it just for RCS seems a little bit iffy, but... Maybe we'll have a combination umbilical... Because we have to have an umbilical anyway, right? Because the space plane connects to the carrier plane and there's fuel crossfeed between them. So maybe the umbilical door can also shield the RCS, but then we'd have to leave it open. <laughs> but that's fine, I guess? I mean, so we'll leave it open until re-entry? Piston out? That might be more complicated. Uh, let me think about that. I think, I think I'll wrap it up here for today, and let me ponder that. Uh, this, uh, as well as other problems that we have here.